Good afternoon, Hope Church. Good to see everyone here. Why don't we stand and let's prepare our hearts for worship today. We'll start with the uh, confession of faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we welcome you here. We say it's all for you. We love to worship you in your house, God. We love to be with you in your house. So we just say what a joy it is to be with you today. So we ask, God, that you would come. Would you encourage our hearts? Would you speak to our hearts today? Would you commune with us, Jesus? It's in your name we pray. Amen.
Alive, I trust in you. 
Daddy, we're here because we adore you. Holy, 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 you are on the throne. Thank you for loving us first. Thank you for all you've done, all you're doing, and that you will do because of the promise of you and your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray for our country that you would bring, and are bringing, a revival. Remove the scales from our eyes so that we may see your truth uncolored by the world. We are surrounded by worldly truths, half-truths, misinformation. Only your word is the truth. This truth is sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the world. Thank you, Jesus. We pray for our friends and family that you have sent into the field. We pray for breakthrough encounters, open doors where you may share your world with them. We pray for protection against the enemy and his schemes. We pray that your word would spread through the land. We pray the same prayer for our church. We pray for fruitfulness in this church. We pray that you may bring light into our communities. We bring boldness and open doors to our encounters. Lord, we thank you for the Atkins. We thank you for their gift in worship and teaching this weekend. Jesus, we love you. We honor you. In your name we pray. Amen. Don't sit down yet. Why don't you greet one another? Stay standing. Say hi. All of the above. We have a lot of faces in this house, some guests and some people we haven't seen in a while. So greet one another. It's good to see everyone here. All right. Cool. It's good to see everyone. Um, why don't we jump into some announcements? So this Wednesday, uh, it's actually gonna be March 1st. So right now our missions partner is not Lana yet, but on Wednesday it will be uh, our missionary partner, Lana Vasquez. Usually on the first Wednesday of the month they join us and so we find a way to pray with them uh, and they give us an update, but she cannot join us this Wednesday. But we will still be praying for her in her ministry. So uh, please join us for that for our Wednesday hop and this will be on Zoom. We will be hosting on March 10th and 11th the Flourishing Together Seminar. So this is gonna be a special event. Uh, we're gonna have Pastor Mia and Joe. And the next slide, they are pictured there. Um, I had the chance to meet them when we were in Houston, Texas. They're wonderful people, super gifted people, uh, really good speakers, so you don't wanna miss out for that. Um, we are asking you though for uh, registration for the parenting seminar only. So Friday night, we, we won't have our normal house churches. We'll meet here for the seminar and then on um, Saturday morning for the parenting seminar, we ask for registration for that. Uh, we do have a seminar following that for educators. And then of course, we have our chosen gathering after that. So uh, please register if you would like to attend the parenting seminar. You can do that on the Church Center app. And if you have any questions, please contact Amy Huang. Her email address, you can reach her at Hope Kids Director. 
at hopemd.church. This is all on the website. What? There you go. Okay. So our Hope VBS is coming up July 17th through the 21st. Get excited. Mark your calendars. Uh, we love having VBS here. It's a great time. We have a lot of people coming in from the neighborhood. So um, be sure to mark your calendars for that. Uh, we will be giving out dinner, I believe, every night. So come hungry. Well, don't come too hungry. Save the food for the kids. But we're going to have a VBS here. We'll feed you guys and everything like that. Uh, we do need volunteers, as always. Uh, this is only made possible from volunteers like you. And so we are asking if you have a heart to serve or if you have any interest at all to serve, um, please contact um, Helen. Contact Helen at hopekidsvbs at gmail.com. The email is there. And my favorite announcement is our missions trip. We are going back to New Haven, Connecticut. We're going to go see uh, Pastor Lenny again. And last year, we came back with so many God-sized stories. And so we're anticipating the same thing. If you have uh, any questions, contact me. If you have any interest, let me know. Um, we've had a number of people already uh, ask us to save them a spot. So if you have any interest, now is the time to talk to me. Let me know so I can hold a spot for you and answer any questions and things like that. Okay. Um, as you guys know, our missions ministry is quite busy. Uh, our missions director, Irene, we are looking for help. So if you have any administrative skills and any passions or a heart for um, serving in the missions department, uh, please contact Irene Kim. We can use your support. Uh, it's a lot of coordinating with our missionary partners and things like that. So please reach Irene at missions at hopemd.church. We have a lot of announcements. Okay. And we are still taking a special offering. We started last week. We're going to be going until March 12th. Um, any special offering that you guys want to give for the uh, Turkey earthquake relief, Hope Church will match that. And so any donations between last Sunday and March 12th, we will match all the donations. All the proceeds will be going for the Turkey earthquake relief. We do have a contact there who's on the floor. So we'll be finding a way to really provide relief for the nation of Turkey. So that's what we are asking for. You can give on the Church Center app. There's a special drop-down menu that Lam created for us, um, and you guys will see it. It's for the Turkey Earthquake Relief Fund. At this time, we are going to continue our time of worship through tithes and offerings, and you can always give through the Church Center app. Uh, you can mail, and we do have an offering bucket up on in the front. So uh, let's go into a time of giving, and we'll worship through giving. Anyone else? Going once, going twice. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this house. Lord, we ask that you would uh, use these funds and finances for your kingdom. It's our heart and desire to worship you through our giving. And we pray, Lord, that your kingdom uh, would advance. Lord, we ask that your kingdom come and your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I do um, have the privilege of introducing our guest here. Uh, Pastor Marcus and his wife, Carolina. Thank you, Pastor Steve. Um, I actually met them in my DTS 10 years ago now. It's been a full decade, and they actually came and led worship for our discipleship training school. I think they were there the first week. I just remember, like, being blown away, melting my face off. If you guys missed yesterday, you guys really missed out because they led worship for us, and, man, it was so good. I remember... Um, Back in DTS, like, when they started leading worship, it kind of felt like I was walking into, like, a thick fog of his presence. I felt the same way yesterday, too. And one of the things I'll, that I'll say about them before they come up is, um, if you guys know anything about worship leaders and musicians at church, we can be divas or divos, right? Uh, worship leaders, you know how we can be sometimes. But um, when I hang out with them and when I sit with them, there's, I never get that vibe. And I can, like, truly say that they are people of character. They're not just people who are here for the music or for worship. They are people who love God. They have a Christ-like character. And I can really say that they're truly 
walking in humility. And so it is an honor for us to have him. Um, if you guys wouldn't mind giving them a hand as, as Pastor Marcus comes up to give us the, his word. Hello, there we go. Pastor, uh, Pastor Jason said before they come up, and then I immediately looked at Carolina and was like, oh, you about to come up with me real quick? Say something. She's, and, and I thought she was going to say yes, but then she just now told me no. I turned around and she wasn't there. So <laughs> how y'all doing? Good afternoon. Sorry, I'm, I'm so used to saying good morning um, on Sundays, but here we are. Um, <laughs> Like, like uh, Pastor Jason said, my name is Marcus uh, Akins. This is my wife, Carolina Akins. Um, oh, they already threw the slide up. So I guess I'll go there now. Yeah, I'll go there now. So <laughs> that's, our, that's our little family right there. So that's our daughter, Eliana, that's in the front. Eliana Sophia, she's two years old. Um, and she is every bit of two years old. Um, <laughs> She keeps us very busy, very preoccupied, and, and um, she has a lot of personality. We love her dearly. She's not here today, and that's on purpose. Um, and then the little, the little um, kid next to her, um, that is uh, our puppy, Coco, who is one years old. And tomorrow, or in two days, will be her one year of us adopting her. So, so we've had her for about a year, and that is my little family that I love dearly. Uh, love them so much. Uh, God is God has blessed me a lot. I, I do not deserve, I do not deserve that picture, but the picture is there, and I'm grateful for that. So, thank y'all, tech team, for throwing that up. Um, <laughs> uh, I want to shout out real quick uh, before we jump in. Um, there's a lot I want to kind of cover. How, oh man, I was hoping there was going to be a countdown clock on this monitor up here. How long I got? Oh man. <laughs> Why did I ask Pastor Q that? <laughs> I should have asked Jason. <laughs> oh, man, I just want to um, uh, just thank the, the pastoral leadership here, Pastor Q, Pastor Mimi, Pastor Jason, um, for just inviting me. One, like Jason said, we met 10 years ago. We, we connected um, a few years ago again, a couple years ago, um, through Lenny, because Lenny was coming here to do so. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just talking as if y'all would know that I know Pastor Lenny. Um, he's a great friend of mine. We've been doing ministry together for years. I've, you know, we've, we've, we've traveled together and done things. I've, I've traveled up and done things with him. Um, he's just a, he's a true brother. He's a true brother in the Lord. And um, yeah, like there was one time he came, you know, he, he was in the area. I never really know where he is in the world, you know. Um, but, but there was one time he was here and I saw that he was here because he pinged his location. And I was like, dog, like, what are you doing? Like, what's up? Like, you know. What are you doing? And sorry, you'll 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 kind of hear as I talk. Um, I'm I'm from Washington D.C. and that dialect comes out sometimes. If you have any question about any kind of word or anything I'm saying, just understand that it's not blasphemous. It's it's totally just it's totally just the way that I talk. <laughs> if you have questions, I'll answer later. Um, but Lenny, um, you know, he was here. He pinged his location. I was like, "What are you doing?" He was like, "Man, like I was just you know at this church, um, and it ended up being being hope." I said, okay, cool. You know, I, you know, I didn't know anything about it. Um, and then he, he just starts talking about this church. He, you know, he's, he's saying glowing things about this church. Like, and I'm not just saying this because I'm, I'm here speaking right now, but he literally, even just a couple of days ago, he was like, man, that's, that's like literally one of my favorite places to go. And, um, and, and he's just, you know, just, yeah, just talking amazing things about this church. I'm like, oh, that's great. And you knew it was close to me and you didn't say anything. That's what's up. So, you know, so, so explored that. Um, we had a breakfast meetup one day, one, one day when Lenny was here and Jason came out and we connected and we talked. And I was like, dang, man, now I remember why I liked you so much all those years ago. And, um, and uh, we connected and said we were going to do some stuff together. And here we are. Um, but I just want to say that I love this. Like, I love, you know, it's the, there can be a dissonance, a disconnect sometimes when, when you're traveling a lot. And, you know, people will think like, oh, you know, we don't really need the, un the every Sunday. We don't really need the local church. Like, we can travel and do these different things. And I, I am a hard no on that. I love the local church. 
Um, obviously, I mean, you can see all throughout scripture that it's a very, you know, biblical thing. Uh, but I, I love the local church. I love what the local church stands for. I love what the local church does for the community. Um, and I always want to be connected. I always want to serve within that context. So when I come to different places um, and places that do church well, um, I am just, yeah, I'm just, I just love this. I love this. I love Pastor Q. I love Pastor Mimi already. I feel like they're like my cousins or something. Um, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. <laughs> you say short cousins. No, that, no, like I, when, when I met with them uh, about a month ago and we were just sitting and talking, um, I was talking to Pastor Mimi and I was just thinking to myself, I was like, man, I feel like Pastor Mimi could be my cousin. I didn't want to say it to you right then because I didn't want you to think I was crazy. But, I, but I, I, you know, somewhere down the line, we're all family of the Lord. So, um, I, and I also want to just implore you all, the church, to just really be thankful for the leadership that you have. You know, it's, it's again, I've traveled a lot. Carolina and I have traveled a lot. We've been to a lot of different places. And solid church leadership is not a given. So, um, I just, yeah, I implore you to really thank the Lord for the leadership that y'all have here. Thank God for them. Thank God that they're pursuing the Lord, that they're following Jesus. Um, yeah, and that they love you all. Can we clap real quick for, for, for your pastors here? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know if that's a normal thing, but I got to celebrate the good when I see it. Okay, so uh, I'm going to pray really quickly, and then we're going to jump in. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, how great is your love for us, Jesus. Oh, how great is the love that you have for us, Lord. Jesus, we could give you praise with our mouths every day of our lives, every minute of our lives, and it would not be enough for what you've done for us, Lord. And Jesus, I'm just grateful for this house. I'm grateful for these people. I'm grateful for the way that you have um, called them to be here right now on February 26th, Lord. And I pray, God, that you are touching them, Lord. I pray, God, that you are encountering them even right now, God. And I pray that your word would land on their hearts, Lord, that you would move them into a place of following you and, and into a place of further communion, Lord. I'm so grateful, so grateful for this house, so grateful for this leadership, God. I pray, Lord, that, that your spirit would rest in this place, God. May this, may this house be a resting place of your presence, Lord, where people can come to get filled, where people can come to get restoration, where people can come for healing, God, because your presence was resting here. God, and I just pray that you would just be with us today, Lord. May your Holy Spirit speak through me, God. Lord, may your Holy Spirit speak through me, Lord that it may be edifying to everybody that's here. Lord, and above all else, may you be lifted up, God. It's not about me, God, and I just pray that you are illuminated through your word, through your spirit, through your presence. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Everybody doing okay? Y'all good? Everybody good? That's good. That's good. That's good. I love Jesus, and, um, you know, I, 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 I say often that, Sometimes you just have to, like, prioritize, like, what's one in your life and then have everything fall under that. So the first thing that I am is a son of God. I'm a beloved son of God. I am unashamed to say that. Um, I am God's son, and he loves me. And then everything else falls under that. Then it's, like, husband and father and, you know, all of those other things. Uh, but everything is, um, everything falls under that first one. I'm a beloved son of God, and I love him because he loved me first. His love radically changed me, and um, I'm following him because his love radically changed me. Um, and he is all I want in this life. He is all I want in this life. He, he, he should be all, all of us want in this life, but um, Jesus is worth everything that we have, and, and, and I love him so much. Sing a little bit right now. Acapulco. That means acapella. I'm just joking. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame 
but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Let's sing that again. My hope is built on nothing less. If you know it, you can sing it with me. Then Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. In Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong, in the Savior's love, and through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. Come on, if you know the song, you know that to be true. Sing it one more time. Christ the Lord. Come on, church. Weak made strong in the Through the storm. Through the storm. He is Lord. He is Lord. Wow, y'all sound great this morning. I told them last night, I was like, man, y'all sound like a choir. Y'all sound good today, too. If, if, if you weren't um, there yesterday, we had an incredible, incredible, incredible time, man. Um, <laughs> the Lord met with us in a very powerful way, um, and I am extremely grateful for that. I'm grateful that there was space for that. Um, just grateful, 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 and, you know, just to see... The way he moves when we create space for him is such, um, it, 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 it just never gets old, you know, taking, taking a minute to, to sing a song of praise to him in the middle of a sermon, it, it doesn't get old. If, if you create that space for him, he's there to meet you. He's there to meet you over and over again. We talked about that yesterday, how, you know, if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, that you will be filled. Um, and man, we, we talked so much yesterday just about the pursuit of Jesus and his presence pursuing him, being radically changed by him over and over and over and over again. You know, the Bible says we go from glory to glory to glory. We're, we're being changed constantly, you know, over and over and over again. And, um, and, and it was just a special time. It was a special, special, special time. And, and I was grateful to be a part of that. Um, we talked a lot about hunger and thirst yesterday. Today we are going to talk about fire. Um, and you know, it, they can kind of go hand in hand. I'm, I'm going to kind of connect the two a little bit today. Um, but uh, what I just prayed even, and I was praying earlier for you all, is um, that, this, that this house, you know, that Hope, Hope Church would be a, um, a resting place for God's presence, where, where, where people can come to get restoration, to get healing, to get breakthrough, you know. Um, and I believe that that's his desire. That that's what he wants this church to be. He, he wants this church to be a resting place of his presence by a community of people that are a resting place of his presence, right? So this is a church, you know, a church and, and yeah, a gathered group of people here to lift up the name of the Lord, which is great. Um, but we are all, I'm, 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 a house of, I'm a house of worship. You're a house of worship. Carolina's a house of worship. Jay-Z's a house of worship. You get all these houses of worship coming together. And then it's one big house of worship where God is exalted and people can come to get what they need. And, um, and, uh, and, and I believe that that's what he has for this house. And I believe, yeah, I just believe that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach a little on, on, on that this morning and what that looks like. And, and yeah, the goodness of God. Um, open your Bibles if you have them or, op or scroll on your phone or your tablet or whatever you have. I, I was telling them yesterday very different now um before you could hear like the pages turning now you can just like visualize people scrolling um so whatever you have to read the bible open it to uh john the gospel of john chapter 15 i'm gonna wait for pastor q to, to finish flipping and then i'm gonna start hear those pages turning I'm reading out of the, the, the ESV, English Standard Version, so um, 
I'm sorry, I didn't want y'all, I, I, <laughs> I didn't mean to say that so that y'all took that down, but <laughs> just, just said that to say that it may be a little different from what you're seeing. It says, I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does, that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, in my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Thank you, Lord. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. I'm going to read that again. Verse 11. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this. And someone laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. Thank you, Lord. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. Wow. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you, God, that it is um, here for us, Lord. Thank you, God, that it is here for us, Lord, that we're not left alone. God, you, you left your word for us to follow, Lord. You left your Holy Spirit, gave us your Holy Spirit, Lord, as a gift, Lord. And we're, in, and we're grateful for the gift of your word, Lord. Thank you, God, that it can edify us today. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. This is one of my favorite passages of scripture. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's very, it, it's looked at in a lot of different ways, you know. Um, he's, this is not, this is Jesus talking to his disciples. It's not long before he's going to be um, arrested and, you know, and taken to death. And um, so it's looked at, it can be looked at in a lot of different ways and the way, you know, people can perceive um, these, these scriptures and what it can mean for them and do for them. Um, I love, I just love the way Jesus was speaking to his disciples here. I love how his heart was so illuminated in that moment of, of, of what he had. Um, verse four, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. I love that part. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Oh, man. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What does it mean to abide? You know, um, Think about think about this all the time. You know, is it, it's, it's something I ponder on a lot. Um, Carolina, again, and I we're 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 artists. I always use that in quotations. We're like worship artists. So like we write music, we release music, and we travel and, and do things like that, uh, which is a lot of fun. You know, uh, we're also obviously very involved with local church and doing ministry and things like that. And um, a lot of times. Uh, ministry can be very busy, you know, whether it's, it's, it's the things that we're doing for ourselves, for our music and things like that, things with the church. Um, sometimes like this week and coming weeks when, when it's a, you know, when it's all together and, 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 and there's a lot going on at one time, um, you know, there's a lot that you can be doing for God. And I don't think that that's just true for us. I think that's true for a lot of people. There are a lot of things that you can be doing for God. Um, there are a lot of things that you can be doing for God, but you can be doing it apart from God. 
You can be doing things for God, but you can do but you can be doing things withdrawn from God. And I've seen that true in my life so many times where I'm trying, I'm just going, I'm hustling, you know, I'm running from place to place, I'm going from place to place, I'm, you know, and seeing seeing God move, seeing God move beautiful things, you know, families restored, marriages restored, people being healed. Um, yeah, just kids laying down their lives for the Lord, like all these things I'm seeing and, and, and still doing things, you know, apart from abiding. And, and I think about that a lot as, and, and I challenge myself in that a lot is, God, Jesus, am I abiding in you? What does that mean? What does it mean, God, to abide in you? What does it mean? It means to remain in the same place or position. It means to reside, to stay, to live, to lodge, to tarry or to dwell. Read that again. It means to remain in the same place or position. It means to reside, to stay, to live, to lodge, to tarry, to dwell. Jesus said the word remain in this passage of scripture six times. Anytime you see repetition like that, it means something. It means something. There's a, there's a, there's a point being made. The word remain in the original language is minnow which literally means to stay, same, to reside, to lodge. What is Jesus getting at here, you know? He's saying that, that that change only happens by being continually connected to the vine. That vine is Jesus, so that his life can flow into us. That's what Jesus wants. That's what Jesus wants. If you read, you know, if... Every time I, 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 I come to this passage of scripture, I'm, I'm, I'm just reading kind of the exchange that he's giving. It's a back and forth exchange that he's giving to the disciples. He's speaking to them and they're, you know, they're not speaking back here, but he's, but he's giving them an exchange. I abide in you, you abide in me. You know, he's, he's talking about that. He's giving, he's, he's giving vision language for that. I, I abide in you, you abide in me. This is what happens. There's an exchange. And so many times I feel like we're, we're approaching Jesus in a way that, that we feel he, that he wants to abide in us, right? We, we, we know that. We, we know that Jesus wants to be a part of us, that he wants to be one with us. But we're not thinking about it from our side. We're thinking about Jesus abides in me, you know, the Holy Spirit with, is, is within me to do these amazing things, to do these different things, to sustain me. Um, but we're not thinking about what it means for us to abide in him. It's a, it's, it's a two-way, it's a two-way street. And that's, and that's part of why I love, that's why I love this passage of scripture so much. Because that's what he's talking about. The exchange. So again, what does it mean to abide? Write down, you don't have to go there, but write down Psalm 91.1. I'm going to read that really quickly. It says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. There's that word again. Again, this is Psalm 91.1. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord, for that. So, yeah, practically, what does it look like to abide in Christ? What does it look like to abide in Christ? I know this is probably a little unorthodox, but like I'm really asking right now. So if you're so so if you, if you're if 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 you if you feel like you have an answer or several answers to that, you can just call them out real quick. What, is it, what, what does it look like to abide in Christ? Somebody, anybody can be the pastors too. If you guys want to participate with me, that'd be great. I love that. That'd be fun. Say again. Go to church. Woo. Read the Bible. Praying. Worship. Obeying. I like that. Who said that? I like that. Anybody else? Going to church, 
praying, reading the Bible, obeying, worship. All of these things contribute to you abiding in Christ, abiding in the vine. It says, apart from me, you can do nothing. It is vital, it is vitally important for us to stay connected to our source, to stay connected to the vine. Branch gets cut off, it, it, it can do nothing else because it's been separated from the source, it's been separated from that vine. We don't want to be like that, amen? We, we, we don't want to be branches disconnected from the vine, the source of life. The source of life. And I just want to encourage you all today. You know, I, I, I say every time I get in front of people, for whatever reason, and, and, and trust me, I, I, I don't, in my mind, in my eyes, I, I, I don't deserve to be here. I say that all the time, um, wherever I am. But, but the Lord um, saw fit for me to be here. So I'm just going to say every time that I'm in front of people, I want to encourage you to go after the Lord more. That's ultimately what I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm, I'm encouraging you all to go after the Lord, to, to lay down everything to follow him. To lay down everything. And I feel once you understand um, just how, how important, incredibly important it is for you to stay connected to the Lord in all of these different ways, you will see exponential change in your life, you know, exponential, exponential change in your life. Jesus is worth that. You see it all throughout scripture. People lay down their lives and start pursuing him and everything is, is just blown away. Everything is blown away. Everything is blown away. I told this story last night, but I remember um, when, I first, when I first gave my life to the Lord, uh, you know, I, I've, I've been in church my whole life, you know, was born into the church. Um, my mom sang in church. Her mom sang in church, you know, uh, was in, yeah, was in church literally my whole life, was born into the church. Um, I, I, I told them last night, like, there was no option for me to go to church on Sundays. Like, it wasn't like a, do you feel like going? It was just like, no, 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 like, you're going, you know? Like, I, you know, I would say that I'm sick or like, oh, man, I'm not feeling the best. She's like, okay, you can get healed in church. Come on, you know? And, 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 that's, and that's how it was, you know? So always was in church, wasn't following the Lord, though, uh, for most of my early part of life, my formative years. And, um, but I remember, I remember, I remember the first time that Jesus touched me. I remember the first time he touched me. I, I, I was getting ready to turn 17 years old, and I was at a youth, I was at a youth worship event, and, and we were singing a Hillsong song called More Than Life. And I remember I dropped, you know, I, I, I dropped to my knees, and, I'm, and I just start crying, you know. And, um, you know, I, I know y'all see me now, they're like, yo, like, he, you know, you're probably thinking, like, he's pretty tall, he's a big guy. Back then, at that time, I was still, like, big for my age, too, you know? Um, now I'm just big, right? Like, <laughs> not big for my age anymore, it's just big. But, like, I remember being on my knees and, and just crying and, and not being able to stop crying. Like, I'm just crying. The, the, the spirit of the Lord is just encountering me in such a powerful way. And, and, and I'm crying, I'm crying, I'm crying, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm, I don't understand why I can't stop crying. Like, his, his presence is overwhelming me in such a way that, like, I'm crying. It's, it's, it's pouring out of me. And I almost got to a point where I'm like, God, like, please, like, stop. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, stop, st stop this so that I can stop crying. But I didn't because I felt his presence so thick and heavy that it got to a point where I didn't even care anymore, right? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I don't, I don't understand what's happening right now, but this is something that I, this is something that I can get with. Like, I dig this, you know, didn't even care that it was making me look like, you know, in my eyes, like a sissy, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, at what time. Like, I, I was always the type that, like, man, you don't cry for anything. Don't cry for anything. You, you, you are, man, you are not going to cry. And I'm literally on the floor in this church, you know, <laughs> just like laid out crying. And I remember in that moment, I said, um, I just said, Jesus, if if I can experience this for the rest of my life, I will lay down everything. I'll follow you. I'll follow you, Jesus, if I can experience this for the rest of my life. And from that moment on, I've been following the Lord. That was, I'm, I'm not even going to say how many years so that y'all know how old I am, but that was, <laughs> that was, that was then. And, and, and I'm here now because 
he has continued to encounter me in that way over and over and over and over and over again. There was a song that we sang um, last night uh, that really touched me. And, and, and it's, it's funny, you know, God does this sometimes. It, it, it touched me in a special way because it, it's actually very much related to this, all of this that I was preparing for this. It, 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 it really does relate to that. And there's a line in it. Jeremy, can you, remember what, can you remind me what the line says? I just brought it up to you this morning. I can make it to the end. I will make it to the end if I can just see your face. And as I was thinking about this, you know, a lot of times when, when I'm preparing for things like this, even in worship sometimes, you know, I'm, 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 I'm looking through lyrics, I'm looking through scripture, I'm looking through different things. And I'm saying like, man, like, Jesus, make this real to me. Make this real to me. I'm not just up here, you know, preaching to y'all this morning because, you know, because, I, you know, it's just something to do. But this is something that's real to me. And I can make it to the end if I can just see your face. If we abide in Christ, if we abide in Christ, if it's, if, if it's not just a Sunday thing, if it's not just a Sunday thing, if we're pursuing the Lord on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, and hopefully Saturday, <laughs> coming in here on Sundays, worshiping together with one another, abiding, day to day abide, abide in me and I, and, and I in you. You will, you will bear much fruit. You will bear much fruit if you do that. If you don't do that, you won't. You'll be cut off. This can be looked at as a very harsh thing. There's a lot going on in our lives. How can I really abide every day? How can I do that? I got a job. I got friends. I got a lot of kids. There's a family here I met last night that got seven kids. <laughs> I said, God bless y'all. I, <laughs> I just got one. And I think sometimes how am I going to make it? They got seven. Good night. How am I going to do that? I got my job. I got my own personal difficulties. I've got my own sin. I've got my own struggles. I've got to try to maintain a healthy life. I've got to, I've got to drink water. <laughs> How am I going to abide in Christ every day when that's the case? I want to encourage you today and tell you that you can. You can do it. That life is available for you. That life is available for you. Jesus, that's what he's waiting for. He wants you to live in this place of not just Sunday encounter. Sunday encounter is great. I just told y'all how much I love the local church. I love it. I love it. It's messy. It's hard. You know, you're dealing with people, and we as people are very flawed people. <laughs> We're very flawed. You know, so it's very messy, you know. But I love it. I love it. So I'm not saying that, that, this, that the Sunday got, please continue to come to church. But every, every day leading up to Sunday, how are you cultivating that, that relationship that he's expressing here in John 15? How are you... How are you keeping that fresh in your life? Do you know how amazing it would be if, every, if most of the people that came you know, to church on a Sunday morning were so, was so filled up with the presence of God all throughout the week? And then when they all came together, it was just, it, it, it was just overflowing. It was overflowing. Everybody's edifying one another. The spirit of the Lord is falling in worship, you know because of what's happening every day, because everybody is abiding in Christ. You're, you're not depending on this person's abiding for you to get your touch from the Lord. You know, you're, you're, you're not depending on Pastor Mimi or Pastor Q or Pastor Jason. They're abiding in Christ for you to get a touch from the Lord. The same way they're meeting with the Lord in their homes is the same way that you can. It's the same way that you can. Abide in me. Abide in me. Abide in me.
abide in me, abide in me. And this is what happens. And this is what happens when, when, when that happens. Verse seven, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Ain't that, that's, 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 that's kind of good, right? <laughs> that's a good promise. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As the father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. Listen to this verse 10. If, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. And this is one of my favorite parts of this as well. Verse 11, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Something that I've learned over time. People, the, the way we view our relationship with God will dictate the way that we pursue him. If you're looking at abiding in Christ, carving out time for him, you know, I'm going to wake up maybe like 10 minutes earlier than I will wake up before to get, in his, to get in his presence, to turn on worship music, to, to get down on my knees, bow before him, to read his word, right? Making a sacrifice, carving out time that you may abide in Christ day after day. If you look at that as something that is joy-filled, something that is joyful, that is what it's going to be for you. If you look at it as something that's just a chore, something that, oh, man, I, oh, man, I, dang, I just got to do this. Oh, man, I got to do this. I got to do this today. If you look at it like that, like, you see the difference. It's like, man, I get to do this today. And oh, God, man, God, I got to do that today, man. I got to get up tomorrow. The, the difference there will dictate the way that you approach that. But listen to that. Verse 11. These things I have spoken to you that, you, that, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. His desire for you is that his joy would be in you and that that joy would be full. So we can joyfully wake up. I don't know what time y'all wake up. If, if you typically wake up at 7, you want to wake up at 6.30, right? If you joyfully wake up at 6.30 and say, I'm going to get a touch from God at 6.30 tomorrow. If you joyfully say, I'm going to open up my word today and read something that I know is going to give me life. If you joyfully turn on worship music and say, I'm going to be, t I'm, I, I know that the Lord is going to meet me with this today. He wants his joy to be in you and that that joy be full. Psalm 16, verse, verse 11 says, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So I'm, 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 I'm going to read those back to back real quick. Verse 11 of John 15, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Psalm 16, 11, in your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Jesus isn't, isn't, isn't just commanding his disciples to do these things just because it's, 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 it's something to do. I'm not telling y'all this today just because it's something to do. He wants his joy to be in you and that your joy would be full. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. If you dedicate yourself to, to, to God in his presence, you, you will be filled with joy. That is what abiding will do for you. I know that because the Bible says it, but I also know it because I've seen it in my life. Again, I've, I've, I've been in different seasons where, where I have tried to do it apart from abiding and it is not joyful. It's not joyful. It's cool. You know what I mean? Like you're doing cool things. You're meeting cool people, you know. But what is that at the end of the day? If, if his joy is not full in you. Jesus' desire is that his joy would be full in you as you abide in him. Him and you. You would abide in him. Him and you. Apart from him, you can do nothing. If we're going to be faithful to Jesus, we need to abide in Jesus.
know, I sometimes think about um, just these people that I've studied, you know, um, through history that have been that have been faithful to Jesus for years and years and years and years, you know, 30, 40, 50 years, you know. Pastor, how, how, how long you been following Jesus? 44 years. It's a long time, man. It's a long time. That's, that's much older than me. Pastor Mimi, how long you been following the Lord? Whew. Y'all hear that? Can we clap for them real quick? <laughs> I'm going to get them to clap for y'all a lot today. Listen. I think about that. I think about them. I think about so many others that have been following the Lord for all these years. And, I'm, and, and I, think, I think to myself sometimes, how, how did you stay faithful? How did you stay faithful? How did you do that for 40 years? You stayed faithful to God for 40 years. I'm sure you fell down a few times, but how did you do that? How did you do that? How did you do that? And I can, almost, I can almost guarantee you had to abide in him. You had to abide in him. You had to open his word. You had to get in his face. You had to worship him. You had to follow him. You had to exchange your will for his will over and over and over again. And that's how you stayed faithful. It's almost mind-blowing sometimes. It's almost mind-blowing. You said that? Thank you. Typically, it's, it's somebody older that's saying that. That just really blessed me, Haki. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> wow. But I'm not going to be that much longer. <laughs> Remembering and believing in the gospel. The gospel means good news. The good news of what Jesus has done for you. If you're looking for something to abide in, you can abide in that gospel. It's by abiding in the gospel, by dwelling in the gospel, by making the gospel the center of our lives that we change. You know, belief in Jesus isn't a one-time thing. It's a continual posture. It's a continual posture. Nothing in these, in these scriptures that we're reading this morning in, in John um, 15 says, says, says do, you know. He, he specifically says, remain and abide. That's, that's, that's what he was saying. Implying that you actually do nothing. You just rest in what he already has. The finished work of Jesus. The finished work of Jesus. Abide in that. Abide in the fact that Jesus has taken your place. That he's already done what we couldn't. That your soul is secure in what he's done for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, I pray, I pray for my, I pray for my daughter whenever I put her to sleep, you know, which isn't all the time. A lot of times it's you. I'll admit that. I have a really good wife, and she is a she is a she is an amazing mother. She is an amazing mother. Thank you. Thank you for being such an amazing mother to our daughter, man. Um, but when I, you know, when, when I put her down, I pray for her. She knows I'm always going to do it, you know. So sometimes even when she's having a tantrum, she's literally like yelling in my ear, sometimes pulling my hair, pulling my beard. It can, it can be very painful, very gruesome, a very gruesome time, bad times can be. Um, sometimes she, she'll be doing that, and I'll ask her, I'll be like, can we pray? You know, sometimes I'll yell it. Can we pray? <laughs> you know, and 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 when I say that, she'll say, "Yeah, let's pray." You know, and then you know we'll we'll sit down and we'll pray. And I'm just even at that time, <laughs> as I'm praying with her. You know, I'm praying that God would protect her and keep her. You know, that He would cover her always. Um, I'm I'm just I'm overwhelmed a lot of. Uh, just a lot of those times I'm just overwhelmed because I'm thinking to myself, man, like, Jesus, you have already done for her what I can never do. 
she's just two years old, but it's the same. It's the same for us. Jesus has already done it all. He's done it. He's done it. A greater revelation of that will allow you to move into a place of abiding. When you realize that he's already done it, he's already done it. He's conquered death, y'all. Death couldn't even hold him. When I die, I'm gone. Death could not hold him down. Death could not hold him down, not even death. He's, he's overcome it all. And as I'm praying for my daughter at night, I'm like, man, Jesus, you've done this for her. You did this for me. You did this for her. He did that for everybody that's sitting here right now. And because of that, you should want to abide in that love. You should want to abide in that love. Can we all stand up real quick together? Oh, yeah, Lord. Lord. If you can, if you can this morning, can you lift up your hands real quick all together? All together, if we can just get on one accord right now and just pray with me. Just pray with me right now. And I wanna and I wanna pray a blessing over all of you. Jesus, help us to abide in you. Jesus, help us to abide in you, Lord. We we read right here in your word that apart from you, we can do nothing, Lord. So help us to abide in you, Jesus. Help us, God, to see, Lord, that you have conquered everything, Lord. You've defeated it all, Lord. Jesus, we don't have to strive. We can just abide because of what you've already done, Lord. We're not chasing something that cannot be attained, Lord. You have done it all. You have conquered it all, Jesus. Lord, and I pray that you would help us to abide. Lord, I pray for everybody that is in this room right now with our arms lifted high, God, that we would abide in you, Lord, that we would carve out time to get face to face with you, Jesus, that we would learn more about you from your word, Lord, that we would encounter you through worship, Lord, that we would come to church and be edified by our brothers and sisters, Jesus. God, help us, Lord. We cannot do this apart from you. We can't do this apart from you, Jesus. We can't do this apart from you, Jesus. Help us to abide in you, Lord, as you abide in us, Lord, that we may bear good fruit. I pray for every family that's here right now, Jesus. I pray for every person that is here right now, Jesus. God, that as they pursue you, Lord, you would continue to fill them and that they would bear good fruit, Lord. I pray that for this house, Lord. I know that's your desire, Lord. You just want to be with us, Jesus. You want to be with us, Jesus. That's what you want, Lord. You conquered it all so that we could be with you and dwell with you forever, Lord. Jesus, and that is our desire this morning, God. Thank you, God, for, the, for so many that we've seen that have come before us, Lord, that were faithful and abiding, Lord. Setting the groundwork for where we are right now, God. Put in us a heart to go after you, to run after you, Lord, to abide in you. Give us that, Lord. That's our desire. Thankful. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Come on, just, just start to tell Jesus thank you for what he's done for you. Come on. Come on, let's do that right now. Just, 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 just tell Jesus thank you for what he's done for you. Come on. For specific things he's done for you. Come on, let's just, let's just start to praise God in this place right now for what he's done for us. And let that lead you into a place of abiding with him. Come on. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you for dying for us, Lord. Thank you for taking, thank you for taking our place, God. Lord, for everything you did for us, Lord, that you did not deserve, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord. We are so undeserving of that, Lord, but thank you for what you did, Lord. It should have been us, Lord, with whips across our backs, Lord, but Lord, it, it was you, Lord. You, you stood in our place. Come on, just tell them thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, and we remember, we remember what you've done for us, Lord. We remember what you've done for us, Lord. We remember. We remember, Lord. We say thank you. And because we remember and we know how faithful you are, Jesus, we know that, 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 that 
we can come to you and abide in you, Lord, because of how faithful you are, Lord. Show us, show us over and over again, Lord, just how faithful you are. Every breath we're taking right now, Lord, is because of you. It's because of you, Lord. Thank you, God, that we can abide in you. Rock of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God has put it in us to follow him. We all have a desire. We all have a hunger and a thirst on the inside of us. And God can quench that. He can quench that. We talked about that yesterday, too. If you're hungry and you go after the Lord, you will be hungry no more. And then when that wears off and you get a little hungry again, he'll fill you again. And because of that, we can abide in him. Thank you so much for that, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
was beautiful. Did you write that? Yeah. That's beautiful, brother. That's beautiful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's going to lead us in the benediction. Pray this blessing. like you can hold your hands out to receive the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace thank you Lord Amen. as always if you guys want to receive prayer you guys are welcome to come and receive sorry one other announcement Starting next Sunday, all of Hope Kids and Jam will be joining us here for praise and announcements before going downstairs. So to all parents and all you kids here, come here into this room next Sunday at 1215 starting the month of March. You will be worshiping with us before you get dismissed to go downstairs.